Hello and welcome Fisher with another BMS video. In this video we're going to look at the F-15E Strike Eagle and we're going to do a short mission from uh, Chongun to uh, the Kotar range. We're going to drop some uh, GBU-31s on pre-assigned target. We're going to ramp start um, we're going to be with an AI wingman and we're going to come back to Chung Young and uh, do an overhead landing. So we are loaded out as we can see here. We've got got no tanks on board. We can see our gross weight is uh, 70 tons and we have a maximum of 81. So it's going to be a heavy load starting out. Uh, we've got seven of these um, fairly hefty GBU 31s and I've also got um, a number of targets pre-assigned on the range from 99 down as far as 91 although we won't uh, need to hit all of them but I'm going to I'm going to um, release in in a single pass I'm going to release all our GBUs uh, uh, from a reasonable standoff range and um, then we're going to uh, duck down and have a quick BDA to see what happens or bombs and then we're going to come back. So a couple of things to note about the um, the F-15. Uh, you It uses flaps although it does, it's, the flight control system seems to not need to require a trim but it certainly does need flaps now. Uh, there is some automatic configuration of the flaps, but I like to have uh, manual override and those. So I've got two keys mapped for the flaps up, one key for fl flaps up and one key for flap down. Um, and there's one more um, item that um, I have assigned, and I just find it this way by clicking the I and we can see it. It's the TWA power button toggle and this allows us to uh, switch on all the RWR um, um, instruments and it's equivalent to the RWR power button on the C the MS page. So I'm going to set that to I um, and that's the way I had it and we'll see it's functioning when we get into the pit. So that in mind, going to uh, just make sure we've got our data cartridge saved for the plan. No other. And um, we are going to commit to takeoff. Okay, so we're in the pit now and I'm uh, going to use our night vision to assist us in our startup. So on the right um, hand side panel here, you can see under the oxygen regulator, we've got uh, the generator switches and they're used for our battery power and our full power. So if I switch both of those on as a first step, and then we're going to go to the left hand side and the fuel is a little bit different than normal. Um, we can see we have these uh, normal aft and forward and our master fuel is already on. So I'm going to um, click the normal to on uh, and I'm going to switch, switch those two to on also. Now I need to switch these off as soon as we have the aircraft up and running. And uh, coming back over to the oxygen uh, panel, the air conditioning um, switch, which would the equivalent to the air conditioning switch in the F-16 is this switch here and it's also used for the oxygen so the first step gives us air, air conditioning. Before I start up anything I'm going to find the sweet spot for our canopy rail and it's here you can see it's on the on the uh, sorry on for our canopy and you see the switches on our canopy rail and you can see the canopy rail is closing by the animation on the handle. So we're pretty much ready now to start our jet fuel starter and it's a single, it's a normal uh, click for this. And you can hear a little bit of noise which tells you that it's ramping up. 
Now our engine uh, rev gauge here, it's got some digits on the top, left and right here, two engine aircraft. But um, the right hand digit is not animated, so we have to rely on the left hand side to give us an indication of what our revs are. Now I have revs switched on um, in the configuration file so we can see the actual revs in the hold, it which help us, but we can't see it at this stage. So we need to uh, spool our engine up to about 25%, and we judge this by when the two goes past the screen and uh, moves on until you can see half the two. So you're gonna you're gonna see it kind of stopping here. So that's about right now. So now we're ready to start um, our engine by clicking our idle detent. What I normally do is cycle the throttle and back to idle and we'll see our gauge now starting to roll up and it should roll up and settle out at 70. So we can hear our jet fuel starter has switched off and our engine has taken over now. So we're at 70 percent. Yeah, just take this off here because no, you can see there's no errors and no unusual warnings so we're good to um, switch our internal lights on so we can see some stuff. So a console button here, click it twice and now we can switch off our night vision and we've got a nicely visible cockpit. Now we could switch on, there's another um, brightness uh, switch over here but I think it's a bit uh, gaudy and unnecessary and it doesn't give me any additional information so I will leave that one off. So our engine is started now and we're going to uh, switch on our alignment switch here. Now I've got these mapped to my button box here so you'll have to just watch what I'm doing. Um, you can see the alignment switch there and then the other six uh, sensor switches are being switched on in turn. See the FCC switch is on there. So um, any of the other switches which are not, I literally just go through them one by one and the hard point uh, powers, switch them on, DHF radio to both, uh, our comms radio to on, once again I don't have to turn them up too much because I've got uh, volume knobs on my button box for these, the TWS caution light and the weapons caution, so not light but um, uh, volume knob, and now we uh, go from our backup to our CNI button, uh, fire, control, fire control radar on and radar from standby to on and our lighting, external lighting, we leave it in uh, continuous mode for the moment until we uh, get clearance to taxi and uh, moving up uh, we have our our taxi lights and we wait until we're ready to taxi to switch that on. Nothing else we need to worry about here. I'm going to switch these to off and leave our first switch to normal. And let's come up now to our MFCDs and I'm going to load our data cartridge in and have a look at our test and see the, uh, let's try and clear any errors that would have come up here. I'm back to fire control. Okay, so our bit test is running there. And uh, our alignment is running nicely, so we're pretty much um, ready to go. So now let's start uh, talking to the tower and get our aircraft uh, ready for taxi. Ground, remove chocks, ground, remove EPU pin, common, take off runway. Link 1 1, turn 1, runway 3 4 left for take off. Okay, 3 4 left, so we don't have to turn our course knob too far. Um, and this is a little bit different. We used to, in the F 16, we can roll the knob, but we've got to press it one 
one click at a time for one degree at a time I, I haven't found uh, a way of doing it any more quickly than that so it's 3 4 left is our takeoff runway and uh, I'm just going to pause track IR while I look at the charts here Need to get an idea of where the tower is Okay, so the tower is behind us, so the tower is to our north. Take our radar out of standby. I'm just going to dumb these um, MFCDs down a little bit. They tend to be a little bit unnecessarily bright given the uh, time of day. To make them a little bit easier on the eye if we do have to use our night vision. Okay, we're ready to um, roll out now, so I'm going to switch to navigation mode. Ground. Taxi for departure. Link 1, you are number 1 for departure. Taxi, Romeo, Sierra, Foxtrot, and hold short, runway 34, left. Okay, switch on our nose wheel steering. Our parking brake on and off cycle it. And we're ready to roll. Okay, we've got good timing. That's Delta. Echo. And this is our one. So we're Link 11, contact tower for takeoff. Switch 23015. Okay, links pushing uniform 3. Tower. Ready for departure. Links 1, John Bond, tower, position and hold, runway 34 left. Okay, one's taking active. Three, four left. Left side. Okay, just switch our oxygen on. Full now. And the uh, pitted heat doesn't doesn't respond. It's not uh, available here. As it is in the F-16. I'm going to press my I switch now to switch on our RWR. Okay, I'm going to switch our... Chaff. Flares to on. Program to... to manual mode. And we're going to switch our RWR on here. All ready to go. Number two is aligned there. So links, links flight ready for a takeoff. Okay, one is 
running up. Break, break, go. So this is a full gated takeoff because of the takeoff weight as we saw in the configuration. Um, we need to have full thrust. Okay, one's rotating. Gear up. Departure. One is airborne. Okay, links, check right, one zero zero, rest your two. Five degrees nose up. Okay, pulling back the buster. Okay, rolling up one two zero. So I'm gonna configure our RWR on the left MFCD. Yeah, we've got a caution light there, and we don't have. Or WR or our FCR on the left side. So let's see what that is. Yeah, time of flight shouldn't be a problem. Clear that. FCR, I'm not sure why the FCR is not working. Yeah, let's go back here. FCR is on. Radar is on. Nothing that should be blocking my FCR from working. Okay, links check left, ref steer three. It's not critical for this mission, but um, let's see if we can uh, get it going warning, again. Warning! 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 Okay, you are getting a warning indicator. I don't know what that's about. Probably. Our gear up, or our um, armor seat there. Let's see what it says here. Nothing there. I can't see any fault. Yeah, I don't think we've overstressed the aircraft. Anything unusual? Kind of trying to reboot the radar. Does it do anything? I don't. I think I've only got a one flight in this um, F16, F15E, without um, errors, and I've done this mission a fair number of times now, trying to test out the F15. So radar. 
while for this training it's okay but uh, not having radar is a showstopper and there's nothing I seem to be able to do to get it running which is annoying Okay, one's pushing a uniform six tactical. So we have an avionics fault that we can't get rid of. I don't know what it is. So switch the RWR stuff off for the moment. It's only um, confusing me. So nothing down here. Everything is good. Radios are all good. Okay, so I'm heading north in the range now. Yeah, we should be able to do our mission. Just a bit irritating not to be able to uh, use our fire control radar. So I've got the, uh, I've got a an area box there which covers the MOA for Kotar, but it's also stretch out a little bit to the north to give us a decent run in uh, to the target and I'm going to climb an altitude to um, target 22 so we're going to level up at Angels 2-2 that's a funny one, sometimes that digit disappears also and maybe that's the warning, maybe that's the um, the avionics fault there we're not getting the full uh, fuel indication there. Although I have a feeling, um, I have a feeling this is a fuel fault. And if there's a fuel fault, we're definitely going to have a flame out or more than one, and we may not get home. Okay, so we'll continue to climb. We're just out of the MOA now, so I'm going to turn back in. I'm going to fence check now. Switch on our GPS bombs. Power on our GPS bombs. Uh, configuration is okay. Ripple rate 1. On the left hand side, we have nothing there, so might as well put my TGP over here. Because I'm not using it for anything else. Um, I, I, sorry, I'm going to put the HSD over here. Okay. So let's turn back in now. Climbed up a little bit too high in altitude. Let me adjust that. What we want to be doing is, um, we want to be heading towards our target point. We're going to start off at target point 99. We're going to set that up. And 
we should be heading at 180 when we're heading towards our target point. So I'm going to set us up using our HSI here. You can see where we need to be turning on fairly sharply here because um, we're coming on to that 180 radio to target point 99. Can afford to drop a little bit in altitude, not much. See, we're pretty much almost aligned there. Just then, um, I'll leave it for a second and let it. That's it. That's as good as it's going to be. So now I'm going to stay online. So 180 is our course heading now. And we're at Angels 23, which is good enough. We'll switch on our master arm now. And we've got good symbology. Everything looks good. Speed could be a little bit higher. Nineteen from target. Okay, leveled up Angels 2 2. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pickling the bombs and changing my steer point, de decrementing the steer point down from 99. So, a pre release cue there. So we'll be releasing seven bombs in sequence. Okay, ten miles from target. Okay, holding the pickle now. Changing the steer point. Pickle. Steer point. Ninety-five. Pickle. Pickle, 93, pickle, and that's it, no more weapons left. So, caution, caution. Going to change to cat one now, and we're going to start heading down towards target so that we can have a look at these bombs as they arrive in. put on our air brakes to allow us to loiter a little bit around. Okay, there's one in. Two in. Altitude. Altitude. Three in. Four. And there should be one at this end of the runway. Five. Yeah, there may have been a couple of them close to close to each other, but that's um, that looks like them all. So that's a good delivery. We could have gone, we could have um, just gone RTB after we released those uh, bombs, but I wanted to do the um, BDA on them. Okay, so we need to configure our aircraft and get up a bit of speed now, and let's RTB. So fence out. And steer five. So links check left, ref steer five. And let's get our wingman lined up with us now. I can't see him. 
Can't see him on IDM because our FCR is not working. Information one. Close up. Information one. Close up. Wing formation one. Close up. Okay, I want to bring him in close because we'll be doing the overhead break. Now we're at 34. So we're heading uh, from right to left. Um, I'm not sure. We should be 34. Oh, we were 34 left on the way out. Maybe we're 34 left on the way in. 38 from 5. So I'm going to push the push directly to 6. So links check right, refs here 6. So one's 48 from 6. Okay, we're still missing that digit from the fuel gauge. But we should have uh, lots of fuel, we should have 16,000 pounds. Two mission, say fuel. Hmm, digits coming back again. It's like as if there's uh, one of the digits not working. So that's not the avionics fault we have. The wingman nicely in tow there. Links uh, push uniform seven. Okay, we're in range now from the tower, so approach. Request overhead approach. Okay, so we're cleared in for three, four, right. So it'll be a right hand break, and uh, wingy should be on my left. There he is. Okay, we're now 17 from home plate. You can actually see it out there, so I'm gonna offset a little bit. Actually, we're offset quite nicely, I think, from where we are here. We got good visual on the approach. So we're set up for 340 here. So what we want to do, this is pointing to our, our beacon at the airport. So um, what we want to do is we want to be turning on when this one hits the 34, which is around here. But because we got a good visual, we can kind of manage this by looking out of the pit. Which is probably what we should be doing now anyway, because it's a, a visual approach we're doing. I'm going to start pulling back now on speed. And manage altitude. So we're 34 right. And a right break. Looks like a shorter runway. Ok, 
Okay, I'm going to apply some air brakes to manage our speed a bit better. Uh, not what I wanted to do. He's going to overshoot me now. He's probably not going to be uh, in the brake with me. What do you bet that? Lost visual on him. Okay, we're good on speed, just um, targeting a better altitude and aligning. There he is on my left, so we might be okay. Need to call a terror. Terror. Request landing. Terror. Request landing. Terror. Report overhead break. Okay, I was a little late in that I hadn't switched my frequency. So hopefully he'll come around with me. Rolling out downwind. Lost a little bit of speed there. Gear down. And air brake out. Okay, I think I should be between 200 and 220 knots um, on downwind. Okay, I've aligned a little bit too close to the runway. It's better. Okay, that looks like a good point to turn on the perch. Once for right base. Okay, uh, I was too close there to do this, so I've overscoped this a little bit. Still good. Uh, to get my flaps down. Now I've overcooked it. knots for touch down, that's not too bad. Bit of a bounce. Where I can get off here. Links one two contact room three two seven five nine zero. Here's my number two. So he did come in with me. Links one one contact room three two. 
Ground. Taxi to ramp. If you haven't uh, had a chance to try the F-15E, I suggest um, you do. It's certainly flyability. It's different from the F-16, much different. Um, it packs a whole pile of fuel, so it can take you a good distance. Um, and it can also take um, uh, a lot of uh, ordnance other than go. Okay, just finally to look at the hits, we can see that we had... Yeah, seven hits, 100% success on releasing those weapons. So it's a good methodology to use for uh, GBU-31s.